Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about understanding the English indices of multiple deprivation and then making use of uh, these indices, which I would demonstrate with the help of my ongoing research on poverty deprivation and dementia. I plan my talk uh, like this. I would begin with a brief overview of the concepts of poverty and deprivation, measures of deprivation, and then I will move on to discussing the English indices of deprivation in detail and then my ongoing research. So coming to the concept of poverty and deprivation, different economic philosophers have tried to define poverty or the state of deprivation in using different terms. Well, I'm not reading out this slide, but it is very clear if you read this slide that poverty is complex. It is not really easy to define poverty. And there have been differences in explaining it, both conceptually as well as from the measurement perspective. Uh, poverty line or consumption norms, as we would see soon, actually distinguish poor from non-poor and also give the proportion of poor to non-poor or to be more precise, proportion of poor in the total population. Uh, well, Nobel has tried to define deprivation as not enough financial resources to meet the needs. And uh, Amartya Sen says that absence of entitlement is deprivation and so very quick uh, round of understanding on what he means by entitlement. So Amartya Sen explains that entitlement could be of five types. The one could be through trade, that is you go to the market and buy the thing, maybe a loaf of bread or something. Maybe you produce it on your own or you work in a factory which produces loaf of bread uh, where you give your labor and give get some wages or loaf of bread in return. It could be through inheritance or transfer, or it could, if any disruption in either of this could cause deprivation. Again, in deprivation could be for a short period of time, or it could be a prolonged one. Now coming to the measurements of poverty and deprivation, the two most commonly used measures and the traditional measures of poverty or deprivation is the headcount measure. Headcount measure is based on income and the shortfall from what is defined as the poverty line is the number of persons below the poverty line is the headcount of the number of poor. Somehow this measure suffers from the limitation that it is not sensitive to the distribution of income and even those within living below the poverty line, what is the extent of deprivation that cannot be gauged from this headcount measure. The second measure, minimum nutritional or food requirement also is somewhat similar to defining a poverty line that if somebody does not get specified intake of calories per day, then they are classified as poor or deprived. But again, this measure uh, also has limitations, the choices of uh, commodities and habits, everything uh, varies uh, significantly across regions and cultures. Uh, and if you try to link these calorie norms or minimum nutritional or food requirement with income, then again, it would uh, be based on the income-based uh, poverty line. Uh, and the nutritional requirements would in turn determine the income requirements. And therefore, the third measure of deprivation is the relative deprivation. And that is what we are going to discuss in detail in terms of English indices of multiple deprivation. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, how much a particular group of people or how much a particular geographical area or an individual is deprived with com in comparison with the comparable groups. Uh, that is what the concept of relative deprivation is. Now, if we go to the background and history of English indices of multiple deprivation, 
it is a successor of uh, the index of local deprivation. So prior to the indices of multiple deprivation, there used to be a local deprivation index. And the index of multiple deprivation was developed and commissioned in 1998 by the then Department of uh, Environment, Transport and Regions, and it was published in the year 2000. Since then, index of multiple deprivation has been published in 2004, 2007, 2010, 2015, and the latest one is 2019. But mark one thing, uh, it is referred to as indices of multiple deprivation. It is not an index, it is indices because it has seven subcomponents. It has seven components or seven domains, and each domain has its own index. Now, it's important to talk something about LSOA, which is the lower layer super output area. Uh, because indices are estimated for lower level, lower layer super output area. And these are basically neighborhoods, which are of similar or uniform population size, uh, ranging somewhere between 1,000 to 1,500 or approximately 650 households. So indices are basically estimated for LSOA, and then they are aggregated and made available for the higher administrative levels like lo local authority districts and so on. Now, as I mentioned, there are seven domains of the indices of multiple deprivation. The three domains are seen on this slide. One is income domain, second is employment domain, and third is the education domain, education skills and training domain. The other four domains are health deprivation and disability, crime, barriers to housing and services, and living environment. Each of the domains have been assigned weights. So income, income domain and employment domain has been assigned 25.5% each. Education skills and training and health deprivation and disability is assigned 13.5% each. And crime, barriers to housing and services and living environment is assigned 9.3% each. Now this individual domains Income domain comprises seven components. Employment comprises six components. Education, skills, and training comprises seven components. Health, health deprivation and disability, four components. Crime, four components. Barriers to housing and services, four components. And living environment, two components. Now, each of these indices are estimated using different methods. These methods are described in detail in, on the slide, and I'm not reading out considering the time constraints. We can always have a discussion in the question and answer session. So I move on to then the measures of uh, the indices of deprivation. So in what different forms are these numbers uh, estimated and made available to us. So one is the average rank and another is average score. So these two measures basically summary, uh, provide the summary of the average level of deprivation. Second is the proportion of LSOAs in the top most deprived decile across the country is the degree to which higher level area, that is, for example, local authority district is highly deprived. And third one is the local concentration summary, which identifies, again, the higher level areas which have extreme levels of deprivation. Now, for my research, I have made largely made use of the average scores and the proportion of LSOs in the top most deprived decile. Okay, so aggregation, has, uh, aggregation is done at this level, so as you can see on the slide, and they are made available to us. And uh, this data are available in public domain. So as I mentioned earlier that uh, these indices are 
estimated at the LSOA level, there are 32,844 LSOAs across England. There are 38 local enterprise partnerships, 317 local authority districts, 191 clinical commissioning groups. So the indices or the scores calculated for LSOAs are then aggregated to local enterprise partnerships, local authority districts, and clinical commissioning groups. And the ones which are computed for local authority, authority districts are further aggregated to uh, get the estimates for the upper tier local authorities. So how is the aggregation done? So we have the average score for the LSOA. It is converted into a weighted average score by multiplying it with the LSOA population. And they all are then summed up and divided by the total population for the high level uh, administrative units that is, could be local enterprise partnership or local authority or clinical commissioning group. So this relative levels. Now, if we look into the characteristics, shrinkage method, I did not read out uh, on the slide, but shrinkage method is used uh, to derive the, so shrinkage method basically enhances the reliability of the measurement of the index of multiple deprivation score, even the individual indices of multiple deprivation. Then most of the domains also employ factor analysis to identify one single common factor and um, against the possibility of a more meaningful factor. Exponential transformation is also undertaken so that a lack of deprivation in one domain could compensate for the deprivation in the other domain. And this transformation, the exponential transformation is scale independent and therefore it is not affected by the size of the lower layer super output area population. So these are basically the characteristics of the indices of multiple deprivation to ensure that they give us a robust estimate of deprivation. However, just like any other measure for anything, including deprivation or poverty, even indices of multiple deprivation has some limitations. And factor analysis, which is used to identify the single most important factor, also suffers from the limitation of replicability that Factor analysis is based on correlation and correlations change over time and therefore it has the issue of replicability over time. Another uh, issue or the limitation is that there is no robust method to validate deprivation measure for small areas. Again, the weights that are assigned to each of the domains, the reasons for assigning particular weights is not clearly explained. And there could be possible issues of double counting. Something that came to my mind was the universal credit claimants, which is introduced in the index, index of multiple deprivation for 2019. Universal credit claimants in no work requirements is included both in income and employment domains. So could be it, it might result in double counting. Now I move on to my ongoing research on dementia and deprivation. So dementia is measured as the diagnosis rate of dementia or call it dementia prevalence. And that is particularly um, uh, for the age group of 65 years and above. Now, if we look at the statistics of the diagnosis rate of dementia across England, uh, the data are for the month ending January 2023. So the diagnosis rate ranges somewhere between 20 to slightly more than 80. The average score for index of multiple deprivation, the combined index of multiple deprivation ranges from slightly less than 10 to slightly more than 40. The diagnosis rate is a percentage and therefore it has a fixed range from zero to 100 whereas average score of index of multiple deprivation is a weighted average of composite score of subcomponents 
So they do not have any fixed range. But if you look at the maps on the left-hand side of the slide, in the upper panel, you will see that a large proportion of the, uh, okay, this, the, the boundaries in the map, they represent the local authority districts. They are not at LSO level. The reason is the diagnosis rate of dementia, the data for that is available at uh, local authority district level. And therefore, I have made use of the average score of index of multiple deprivation also at the local authority district level, aggregated at local authority district level. So if we look at the diagnosis rate of dementia for people aged 65 and above, the rate is really very high and uh, it's very high across the country. You will see very, very less uh, regions which are actually green or slightly darker than green. Most of the regions you will find is in the brown and red area, brown and moving gradually to uh, on the color scale towards red. Whereas if you look at the average score of index of multiple deprivation overall, most of the areas appear to be in green. Of course, you might notice that there is a small gray region in the map and that indicates unavailability of data for those regions. But again, a large proportion of uh, the local authority districts are green in color, which means that the average score for index of multiple deprivation is very, very low, which means most of the areas across England are relatively lesser deprived. Now, if we compare specifically the health deprivation and disability domain, there, the deprivation seems to be very high. The scores range from slightly less than minus two to slightly more than one. That is the scale, at, scale on which uh, the health deprivation and disability index is measured. It is also some kind of weighted average, but as you see, shrinkage method is applied and then factor analysis is applied and then uh, exponential estimation is applied. And finally, you come at uh, the values which may even range from uh, 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 may even have a negative number. So higher the number, more is the deprivation. So here you will see that again, a large proportion of the local authority districts show high levels of uh, health deprivation and disability across England. And if you see the, there is a pattern which matches more or less uh, in the panel uh, in the upper, upper panel and the lower panel. That is the map for dementia diagnosis rate and the map for uh, the average score for health deprivation and disability. However, we will see that um, the correlations, correlation is not very strong between the two. Okay, so now if we compare the average score of overall IMD and health deprivation, you will see that while overall deprivation seems to be low, health deprivation seems to be high from the color that you can see in the maps that health deprivation index is more brown and red, whereas overall IMD is relatively greener. Coming to the correlations. So the first column shows the correlation of different domains of deprivation, overall index of deprivation with that of the dementia diagnosis rate. And we can see that there is a weak correlation or a mild correlation or medium correlation across uh, different domains of deprivation. Well, as I mentioned that dementia diagnosis rate uh, is for the people who are 65 years and above, and therefore another index, which is specially estimated for old age people who are also 65 years and above, income deprivation for old age people, this index is also calculated, estimated, and made available by the government of UK. So that also I have taken into consideration for my research and the correlation is again very weak. But if you see the correlation between um, the dementia diagnosis rate, living environment, and 
barriers to housing services, there is a negative correlation, which means that higher the barriers to housing and services, lower is the dementia diagnosis rate and higher or better the living environment, lower is the dementia diagnosis rate. Now, if we take into consideration the proportion of LSOs which are highly deprived in the top uh, in the top ten percent or the top decile, then you will see that you see the map which is absolutely green in the bottom panel of uh, the right uh, of the left hand side of the slide. So across England, there are very few. I mean very few local authority districts which have slightly higher levels of uh, higher proportion of LSOs which fall into the top 10 decile of deprivation. Same is the case when we come to health deprivation and uh, disability uh, domain. When we talk about the proportion of LSOs which are highly deprived, the proportion is really very less. So this is in contrast with the average score where we saw that the average score shows that there is a high level of health deprivation across the local authority districts. Here it shows that the proportion of LSOs which are highly deprived in the local authority districts for the health deprivation and disability is again very, very low. Therefore, this requires further uh, research, further exploration. And Unlike the average scores, uh, well, so this is all I had to discuss today. And the major takeaways I can think of from today's session is there are many methods of measuring poverty. However, the most recent method of estimating IMD has the list limitations, and it covers a wide range of domains of deprivation. There are some limitations which I have already discussed in detail, so I'm not repeating it over here. But uh, the uh, indices of multiple deprivation are available in the form of average scores for LSOs, and they are made available at higher administrative levels also. And the research that I mentioned, which I am currently, uh, which is an ongoing research that examines the patterns and associations in dementia and deprivation at local authority district level. The results reveal weak association. There is a negative correlation, as I mentioned, between the di dementia diagnosis rate and deprivation for housing and services and living environment. And there is a very high level of correlation across among the domains of deprivation with the IMD. Now, the way forward is we are planning to examine the pattern in correlation over time, and uh, we also plan to undertake. Uh, the impact uh, to, to examine the impact of dementia while holding for demographic characteristics. Thank you very much for patient listening and see you in question answer session. Thank you.